All right, I think we've connected uh, with the president of uh, the Republic of Georgia, Mikhail Saakashvili, right now in Tbilisi. Uh, Mr. President, uh, what is the latest as far as the actual battle, the, the fighting that is going on between your troops and the Russian troops? Well, sorry, first of all, for uh, this weird position, uh, in a way, we, we, from time to time, our lines get under cyber attack. That's a new technology these days of war. But um, uh, I, I can hear you well. I think, um, uh, I mean, uh, the, the point was that uh, for the last uh, uh, several days, uh, since 150 Russian tanks entered the Georgian territories on the, the night of August, uh, I mean, August 7th, when the whole hostility erupted, when we responded to the tanks entering the Georgian territory we had uh, uh, for three three days of fighting but mostly we had three uh, besides fighting the main thing was that three days of uh, intensifying uh, bombing of Georgia uh, and uh, basically bombing of 90 percent uh, well predominantly um, civilian targets is it true that today, Russian is it true Mr. President excuse me for interrupting that Russian warplanes have now bombed the international airport uh, where you are in Tbilisi They've, um, they, they've targeted international airport on a number of occasions. Uh, by the way, half an hour before uh, French foreign minister uh, and Finnish foreign minister have to land there. But, um, but uh, I don't know exactly what's the, what's the damage is, but they've been uh, hitting, uh, you know, yesterday they blew up the whole residential quarter, killing uh, lots of lots of people. Um, today they just hit a residential area in Tbilisi uh, out of any strategic or military or anything, any enterprise. They've been continuously uh, hitting some companies here. So the, the, but the, I was traveling today for the whole road, for all roads in Georgia. I have to explain to you just what's happening now. Now, the South Ossetia is here. Now, in South Ossetia, we controlled always this part, and then uh, Ru Russian backed separatists, uh, basically, Russia directly administered this part. Now, uh, but uh, Russian troops entered in from here, from here, uh, and, uh, and the Russian troops also came to our border here uh, with 100 tanks yesterday night. Here in Abkhazia, Russians entered yesterday with uh, with um, uh, hundred plus tanks. They already had, had hundred in place and ten or fifteen thousand extra troops. So they are here, basically in this area. And the Russians, as you know, Mr. the Russians. The, excuse me for a second. The Russians are now disputing uh, assertions from your from your government that you have pulled out your troops from uh, 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 fr from the dis from this, these disputed areas of Akazia. Well, look, uh, no, I mean, there, there, there have been no troops in Abkhazia. They're disputing it about our South Ossetia, but we are not crazy. We are talking about mass unparalleled land intrusion of Russia into any country. It's bigger than uh, with the force, they, uh, when the tank force they went into Afghanistan in 1979 or Czechoslovakia in 1968. So certainly we don't have an interest in but, pursuing uh, excuse the Excuse me, excuse me. I mean, Mr. Yeah. President, ha have you removed your troops from South uh, Akadia, Ossetia? Excuse me. South Ossetia. Yeah. Ossetia. Yeah, I mean, we relocated our, we had our troops in town of Tskinvali. And we relocated them out of the town of Tskinvali, outside the zone where they usually were stationed before, after they've completed the, the task of cleaning the, I basically, and they, they're out. They're out. I can confirm. Because they're denying, the Russian, foreign, the Russian foreign, the Russian foreign minister is denying it. Well, I mean, uh, the, again, uh, we have no interest whatsoever in pursuing hostilities. This civilian targeting and casualties to stop now. Today I was traveling through the road of Georgia and I saw with my own eyes, because I, I also couldn't take planes because their air belongs now to Russians. I saw with my own eyes, you know, it's a holiday season and people are going and now running back to from the seaside holidays and from mountains because they have to find safe refuge. And I saw with my own eyes how Russian planes were descending very low on the, over the road, chasing the, the cars and dropping bombs in proximity of the place where there was compilation of cars. So this is, this is, you know, I'm president of the country, driving like, also I'm protecting, being a target like my fellow citizens, but I had to, be, I, I had to drive there and I couldn't do anything about it. It is a tragic situation. And we Mr. Need president, to Mr. President, uh, need to I, stop. I, I just want to alert our viewers, we may lose the satellite if it goes down, that'll, that'll be the explanation. But what do you want the United States right now to do? The United States and the world community should stop intervention and invasion of my sovereign country. How should the, the U.S. do, how should the US do that? 
I think the U.S. is the most powerful country in the world. I think the U.S. has lots of leverage, and I think the, there are lots of diplomatic means that, you, that it could be done through. And uh, basically, I think this is this is not about Georgia anymore. This is about basic values of humanity, of of uh, American uh, values that we always ourselves believed in. This is all about human rights. This is all about future of of the of the, of the world order. And I think there, there is much bigger thing that is at stake here than just Georgia. For me, it's all about my country. But for a wider world, it's about the future world order. Something that's happening here, you know, people in history will judge very badly people who are doing this. Well, I, uh, I'll in, let me ask a blunt let, innocent civilians. let me ask a blunt question. Would you like uh, the United States to offer military assistance to your country right now? Well, I, I, I wouldn't speculate about it because I, I think our forces are capable enough and they've been really uh, doing a good job. Uh, but, you know, we need to stop hostility. We don't need a further military action. We need to stop it. We need to bring back peace. And ceasefire is about both sides winning. Thing. We, we proclaim ceasefire. We are willing to sign the document on non-use of force and on non-resumption of hostilities. We are willing to be as, as flexible as we can on solving in the issues. We need to bring back peace and to stop this innocent, senseless, brutal, absolutely unacceptable killings. The Russians, the, the Russians are saying that you personally, Mr. President, should be held accountable for this uh, very dangerous situation by your actions over the past few days. They call them a criminal political decision that you took. Let me play this little clip. I interviewed in the last hour the charge d'affaires at the Russian embassy here in Washington, and he, he leveled a direct charge against you. Listen, listen to this Russian diplomat. He should be held accountable for the barbaric and treacherous attack on innocent civilians in South Ossetia. That he should be held uh, accountable for the aggression against South Ossetia. And the best thing he could do right now is to unconditionally, I repeat, unconditionally withdraw his troops and sign a legally binding agreement with Ossetians on non-use of force. All right, Mr. President, do you want to respond? Well, I mean, uh, sounds a little quite Orwe Orwellian to me and a uh, uh, little bit like old times, which I still remember. I'm, I, I, I was the youngest president of the world when I got elected, but I still remember old times and I still remember uh, Brezhnev's times. But, uh, but the point here is the following. We are talking about, country, about place just in the middle of Georgia, in the middle of my country. How can I invade the middle of my country? What's the, it's the, it's the contradiction in terms. And what we are talking about is we are talking about, we controlled most of this area always, but there is a small area directly administered and run by the Russians. And you know, when they talk about South Ossetian separatists and say South Ossetian tank, what kind of South Ossetian tank can be there? It's, it is a Russian tank. Uh, you know, it, what kind of South Ossetian soldiers are there? These are soldiers in the service of the Russian army, trained by them, equipped by them, very well armed by them. So what we are saying right now is that this place needs to get rid of this military uh, thing. They, they, they need to get to be cleaned of all this, uh, you know, of all this violence. And this place needs to get back. Are you to ready, uh, Mr. And President, to go back? To, uh, are you ready to go back to the status quo ante? What existed last week when there were Russian peacekeepers uh, in that area before the uh, situation escalated? There were Russian peacekeepers and there were Georgian peacekeepers. And uh, uh, certainly we are willing to go to status quo ante, but we will certainly with this mass intrusion of troops should stop. Troops should withdraw from the sovereign Georgian territory. And uh, we should do our best to just demilitarize area and protect the civilians. You know, the point here is that we have the population here that is under our control is ethnically Georgian, but also mixed because we are a multi-ethnic country. There is this town of Tsinwali that was under control of the Russian peacekeepers, and that's fine. So far as uh, we should do our best not to allow resumption of criminal activities and, you know, shooting at people, smuggling, all kind of illicit things. And that has been happening. And the Russians have always been agreed with us that there was a problem. The problem point here is that it got to the point when uh, it's, it's just a matter of not anymore respecting 
crossing the borders, and the borders on the Caucasus are built very high. These are very, very high mountains, and we have such a natural boundary that can hardly be overcome even by fast-flying Russian jets. But, Mr. President, do you honestly believe that uh, Georgia's uh, relatively modest military can compete with a superpower like Russia? Well, I mean, I would be crazy to believe that. Uh, but, you know, we are a free, small, uh, freedom-loving nation. And, uh, and, um, uh, and certainly, you know, freedom is not about size. Freedom is about ability to, you know, stand up for your ideals, even if it comes at sacrifice of your life. Certainly, freedom is about living normal lives and not killing or getting killed. But